action from NBC News. From the Vatican in Rome, Christmas Eve at St. Peter's Basilica. The celebrant of Midnight Mass is Pope John Paul II, with music by the Sistine Chapel Choir. This broadcast is presented in consultation with the United States Catholic Conference. The commentator is Archbishop John Foley, President of the Pontifical Council for Social Communications. From St. Peter's Basilica in Rome, you are seeing the beginning of the Midnight Mass of Christmas as Pope John Paul II prepares to enter the largest church in the world to remind a global congregation of the birth of the Prince of Peace. When the Holy Father enters the Basilica, you will hear the Sistine Choir sing the words, Dominus dixit ad me, the Lord said to me, you are my son, this day I have begotten you. All of the statues that you see here in St. Peter's Basilica are truly larger than life size, even the the baby angels which hold the holy water fonts are enormous, but everything in perfect proportion in this building, which is the largest church in the world. John Paul II enters St. Peter's Basilica from the chapel of the Pietà in the back of this beautiful church. approaches the main altar. He's accompanied by seminarians, members of the Legionaries of Christ, a relatively new religious community, numbering a large number of Mexican and American members. are witnessing the enthroning of sacred scripture, the gospel of the nativity behind the figure of the Christ child. The word of the gospel, the word made flesh, Jesus Christ. The Pope wears 
the mitre, the symbol of his role as a bishop. He carries the pastoral staff with the figure of the crucified Christ. And he wears a chasuble, an overgarment, used for the celebration of Mass. And a pallium, a small woolen shawl, which is given to Archbishop Metropolitans. And the Pope is the Metropolitan of the province of Rome. He's the Patriarch of the West, the Metropolitan of Italy, and of course, Universal Pastor. six people who were gathered near the altar and then he gave his blessing to priests who are prepared to distribute communion several years ago several young men from the North American College were altar servers at this mass William Byrne from Washington Austin Vetter from Bismarck North Dakota Jaime Escobedo of San Diego and Alan Sanchez of the Diocese of Santa Fe. They were ordained to the diaconate only a few days ago and are now going to be distributing communion at this midnight mass, which their families are attending. The Holy Father is now incensing the altar, incense which is a sign of our prayer, which we hope will ascend to God with a sweet fragrance. accompanied by his masters of ceremonies, his chief master of ceremonies is Monsignor Piero Marini, a familiar figure on the Pope's many trips around the world, around Italy, and in these international telecasts. The choir now concludes with the same words with which it began. The Lord said to me, you are my son. This day I have begotten you. In nome Patris et Fili et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Peace be with 
you and also with you. Fratelli e sorelle, nel cuore della notte santa del Natale risuona l'annuncio della generazione eterna del figlio diretto e della sua incarnazione nel tempo. Brothers and sisters, in the heart of the holy night of Christmas, there resounds the announcement of the eternal generation of the beloved Son and of his incarnation in time. The Lord said to me, you are my son, this day I have begotten you. He who is the same yesterday, today, and forever invites us to celebrate the mystery of his birth in the liturgy of the Word and of the Eucharist of this Christmas day in order to affirm today Christ is born to us. As to the shepherds of Bethlehem, so also to us is announced the joyful news Today a Savior is born to us who is Christ the Lord. With our hearts bursting with recognition, we relive the mystery of the wonderful goodness of God because his beloved Son, awaited by all nations, has come in the fullness of time and he has become forever Emmanuel, God with us. We will now hear the reading of the Kalends, the story of this night in Christian history. Ottavo calenda sianuari, luna trigesima. On the octave of the Kalends of January, the 30th moon, December 25th, 1992. Many centuries ago, when God created the heaven and the earth and had made man in his own image, and many centuries ago when the flood had ended and the Most High had placed in the clouds the rainbow the sign and covenant of peace the 21st century after the birth of Abraham our father the 13th century after the exodus of Israel from Egypt under the guidance of Moses. Approximately 1,000 years after the anointing of David as king. In the 65th week, according to the prophecy of Daniel, around the time of the 194th Olympiad, in the year 752 after the foundation of Rome, in the 42nd year of the empire of Octavius Augustus, while peace reigned in all the earth, in the sixth age of the world, Jesus Christ, eternal God and Son of the Eternal Father, Mundum volens adventus suo pissimo 
desiring to sanctify the world with his holy coming, conceived by the Holy Spirit, nine months having passed from the time of his conception, was in Bethlehem of Judah, born of the Virgin Mary, and became man. of our Lord Jesus Christ according to the flesh. The singing of that traditional chant was done by Stefano D'Agostino. And now we will hear the Gloria, glory to God in the highest. Gloria in exercis Deo. And the choir will sing in peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. Greece, Portugal, Croatia, Somalia, Vietnam, Thailand, India, Nicaragua, Italy and Mexico, and Korea. continues to sing for you alone are the Holy One you alone are the Lord you alone are the Most High Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father Amen
Pope will now pray, Father, you make this holy night radiant with the splendor of Jesus Christ, our light. We welcome him as Lord, the true light of the world. Bring us to eternal joy in the kingdom of heaven, where he lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Ut quos in terra misteria lucis agnoli, eus quoque gauris per fruavo in cielo. Per dominum nostrum, Iesum Christum, filium tuo, qui te convivis et regna, in unitate Spiritus Sancti Deus, per omnia secula seculo. We will now hear the scriptural readings from the Mass. The first will be in Spanish by Sofia Alejandra. You see there in St. Peter's the cardinals in the front row in their brilliant scarlet, behind them the bishops in their purple, and to the right the members of the diplomatic corps. There are more than 120 countries which maintain ambassadors with the Holy See del profeta Isaías. El pueblo que caminaba en tinieblas vio una luz grande. Habitaba en tierras de sombra. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Upon those who dwelt in the land of gloom, a light has shone. You have brought them abundant joy and great rejoicing. As they rejoice before you, as at the harvest, as men make merry when dividing spoils. For the yoke that burdened them, the pole on their shoulder, and the rod of their taskmaster, you have smashed as on the day of Midian. For every boot that tramped in battle, every cloak rolled in blood will be burned as fuel for the flames. For a child is born to us, a son is given to us. Upon his shoulder, dominion rests. They name him Wonder Counselor, God Hero, Father Forever, Prince of Peace. His dominion is vast and forever peaceful. From David's throne and over his kingdom, which he confirms and sustains, by judgment and justice both now and forever, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. This is the word of the Lord. We will now hear the responsorial psalm. Today is born our Savior, Christ the Lord. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord, all you lands. Sing to the Lord, bless his name. Today is born our Savior, Christ the Lord. his salvation day after day. Tell his glory among the nations. Among 
among all people his wondrous deeds. Today is born our Savior, Christ the Lord. Let the heavens be glad and the earth rejoice. Let the sea and what fills it resound. Let the plains be joyful and all that is in them. Then shall all the trees of the forest exult. They should all exult before the Lord, for he comes. He comes to rule the earth. He shall rule the world with justice and the peoples with his constancy. Second reading in English will be done by Gary Toth. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to Titus. God's grace has been revealed, and it has made salvation possible for the whole human race and taught us that what we have to do is to give up everything that does not lead to God and all our worldly ambitions. We must be self-restrained and live good and religious lives here in this present world while we are waiting in hope for the blessing which will come with the appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior, Christ Jesus. He sacrificed himself for us in order to set us free from all wickedness and to purify a people so that it could be his very own and would have no ambition except to do good. The Cardinal Secretary of State on the far right, Cardinal Ratzinger, next to him now on the right, sings Alleluia, good news and great joy to all the world. Today is born our Savior, Christ the Lord.
directed by Monsignor Domenico Bartolucci. Gospel will be chanted by Roberto Spataro, the deacon for the gospel. Among those attending tonight's liturgy is a large contingent from the United States Sixth Fleet in the Mediterranean, including Admiral Lopez and the commander of the task force, Captain Romanski. Dominus Vobiscus. Lectio Sancti Evangelii Secundum Luca. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. As the Pope incensed the altar, the altar is a symbol of Christ, worthy of our adoration and prayer, so the deacon incenses the book of the Gospels, the Word of God. Pactum est in diebus illis, exit edictum a Cesare Augusto, ut describeretur universus orbi. In those days, Caesar Augustus published a decree ordering a census of the whole world. The first census took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria. Everyone went to register each to his own town. And so Joseph went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to David's town of Bethlehem. He went because he was of the house and lineage of David to register with Mary, his espoused wife, who was with child. While they were there, the days of her confinement were completed. She gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger. Because there was no room for them in the place where travelers lodged. There were shepherds in the locality, living in the fields and keeping night watch by turns over their flock. The angel of the Lord appeared to them as the glory of the Lord shone around them and they were very much afraid. The angel said to them, you have nothing to fear. I come to proclaim good news to you, tidings of great joy to be shared by the whole people. This day in David's city, a Savior has been born to you, the Messiah and Lord. Let this be a sign to you. 
In a manger you will find an infant wrapped in swaddling clothes. Et subito facta est cum angelo multitudo militie celesti. Suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Gloria in altissimis Deo. Glory to God in high heaven. Et super terram pas. Peace on earth to those on whom his favor rests. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Latin is used for the Gospel to symbolize the universality of the Church, the common language of the Western Rite of the Roman Catholic Church has been Latin. In addition to the Sistine Choir, there is a choir made up of people from Rome, members of religious communities, seminarians who lead the congregation in singing and in making responses. The Holy Father now gives the blessing with the book of the Gospels. And then he will present his homily, his reflection on the mystery of Christmas for the Christian world. The gospel is once again placed behind the image of the child Jesus, the enthronement of the word of God. Praised be Jesus Christ. Gloria a Dio, nel più alto dei cieli. Faccia in terra agli uomini che li amo. Glory to God in the highest and on earth, ecco peace among men with whom he is pleased. This is the night we Questa have awaited all year. Le del Tonight the words of the prophet Isaiah about the darkness and the light are fulfilled. In terra tenebrosa, una luce the people who walked in darkness Quella have seen a great light. That light broke through the night which had fallen on Bethlehem of Judea. By the light of that night, people were bathed in an extraordinary brightness. They were above all simple people. Those shepherds who kept watch over their flock. Light shone in their hearts. Non solo intorno a loro c'era la luce, ma anche dentro di loro. Light was not only around them, but was in them. Annunciata da Isaia, the light heralded by Isaiah nei loro cuori. had entered their hearts. In quella luce era presente Dio stesso. In that light God himself was present. It was a light of theophany, manifestation of God. Abramo, Mosè, just as Abraham, Moses, and the prophets of old 
si trovavano entro il raggio della luce di Dio. So now the shepherds too found themselves in the radiance of God's light which had awakened them in the night and had impelled them to set out for Bethlehem. For you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. Not in the city but outside it. The place of the Savior's birth was wrapped in the darkness of that night. The shepherds had been told beforehand, you will find a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. Can it be? Why does the Savior of the world come to his own in such a way? Why, even after he had made known to his own people from the beginning that he would come, did his own people receive him not? This, in fact, is what happened in Bethlehem. The shepherds were wrapped in a light from on high. When they saw the newborn baby, they understood that they were in the midst of a theophany, a manifestation of God. The same certainty would later be shown by the three kings, the wise men from the east when they stood on the threshold of the staple. They too, like the shepherds, enter into the radiance of the divine light which has come into the world. The darkness did not overcome that light, and it will not overcome it. As on that night in Bethlehem, Neither the shadows of poverty nor the gloom of neglect and humiliation can dim the light of the divine mystery. Behold, the Word has become flesh. As the wise men of the East will do later, so on that night the shepherds of Bethlehem experience in themselves the words of the prophet about the people, the people of the old covenant, from whom the Messiah, the savior of the world, was to be born. Behold, the people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. The salvation of the world has its source in God himself and its beginning in time precisely here amid this chosen people. From here it must spread throughout the world. Behold, the people who walked in darkness will see a great light. Among the many nations and peoples of the globe, one people of God. The space of the birth of God, which in the beginning wrapped the fields of Bethlehem in light. This space today is found in countless places on the earth. Wherever at midnight this joyful liturgy is celebrated, the mystery is renewed and made present. The mystery which on that night the shepherds took part in near Bethlehem, the city of David. You have multiplied the nation, you have increased its joy. This joy is more powerful than poverty and misery. It is also experienced by the poor in spirit, 
like the shepherds of Bethlehem, so too, down the ages and generations, countless people of goodwill experience it. Where does this joy come from? Does it not come from the fact that the birth from a woman of the Son who is of one being with the Father gives to all people the certainty of God's love? Could there be a more convincing proof of the fact that God loves mankind? That he has found pleasure in mankind? Can there be an even more obvious proof? Behold, he who is. Behold, he who is. Not in the burning bush, not amid thunder and lightning as on Mount Sinai, Behold, he who is as one of us, as a man, as a baby newly born of the Virgin Mother, entrusted to the care of Mary and Joseph. Behold, he is he who is. Natus est nobis, born to us. The space of the theophany, the manifestation of God in Bethlehem, is filled to the ends of creation. Indeed, it extends beyond them. It embraces the earth and at the same time ascends to those heights which are full of the glory of the God. Glory to God in the highest. The same God who has loved the world, who has loved it even to the point of giving his own son for the salvation of humanity, reveals peace to humanity. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. How difficult it is for the world to secure peace for humanity, for individuals, for nations, for periods of history. I give to you peace on earth to men of goodwill. But can tr peace truly prevail on earth when there is no goodwill? When people do not care if God loves them? Tonight, the church looks to you, Jesus Christ who are mighty God, who are Prince of Peace. And the church implores from you peace for all redeemed humanity. This peace is your name. There will be this peace. Father has uttered a message of peace in the presence of the representatives of the great powers of the world and of those other nations which are being ripped apart by ethnic and class warfare, begging that the world seek peace in Christ. The Holy Father now intones the creed. I believe in one God. 
the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God. Begotten, not made, one in being with the Father, through him all things were made. salvation he came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit he was born of the Virgin Mary and became man as the choir sings these words you will see the Pope kneel in prayer by the power of the Holy Spirit he was born of the Virgin Mary and became man sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate he suffered died and was buried on the third day he rose again in fulfillment of the scriptures he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father he will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen.
fratelli e sorelle, il Natale di Cristo è mistero di gloria. Brothers and sisters, the birth of Christ is a mystery of glory, of light and peace. In communion with all the faithful of the church who hold a vigil of prayer on this most holy night, filled with joy in the presence of the Lord in our midst, we bring to the Father our prayer for the salvation of the whole world. First prayer will be in Greek. For the churches of the East and of the West, united in the joy of the birth of the Savior, that through the power of the Holy Spirit, they may make the good news of Christmas resound in this world, dispelling the darkness of disbelief and indifference, and that they might announce to all the love of God, which shines in the countenance of the incarnate word. Lord, we ask you, have mercy on us. The second prayer will be in Portuguese. Pelas nações que este ano comemoraram o quinto centenário da evangelização. For the nations which this year have marked the fifth centenary of their evangelization, that they might renew their thanksgiving to the Father for the gift of faith and of the presence of Christ our Savior in their history. And with the grace of the Holy Spirit, they might bring to other peoples the message of salvation. The next prayer will be in Croatian. For the people who even today suffer the scourge of hatred and of war, that with the help and solidarity of all nations, and in the name of him who is the Prince of Peace, they may silence the guns and may find again a stable and lasting harmony that will heal wounds and open to all the hope of a peaceful and fraternal coexistence. is in the Somalian language. For all the children of the world, on whom shines the light of God who willed to become a child for us, that they may be received with love, safe from every form of violence and manipulation and may be educated with wisdom and spiritual values and may receive Jesus as their special friend and only Savior. The next prayer will be in Vietnamese. For all those who seek God, for those who doubt his existence or his love, that the manifestation of the Lord in the meekness and humility of Christmas may renew in the hearts of all the certainty of the love of the Father who so loved the world as to give his Son. The final prayer will be in Polish.
For all of us who celebrate in this assembly the birth of Christ, the glory of God the Father in heaven, and peace on earth for humanity, that we may encounter the child of Bethlehem to adore him, and may become like the shepherds, his witnesses, and announce his good news. Ascolta, Padre, pieno di bontà, full of goodness, le suppliche della Chiesa, the prayer of the church, essa accoglie da te il dono di Cristo, that it may receive from you the gift of Christ, who wish to become our brother, and may bring to you with joy and confidence our prayer, through Christ our mediator. Let all humanity be reborn in hope in this night of light, in which all the earth celebrates the birth of your beloved Son, He who lives and reigns forever and ever. As we heard many languages in prayer, we can reflect that about 50 countries are receiving this transmission live this evening. In Europe, Bulgaria, Denmark, Finland, Ukraine, Russia, Lithuania, Latvia, France, Germany, Italy, Monaco, Norway, Poland, Portugal, Spain, Sweden, and Hungary. In the Americas, Argentina, Brazil, Canada, Chile, Costa Rica, Ecuador, El Salvador, Haiti, Mexico, Nicaragua, Panama, the Dominican Republic, the United States, Uruguay, Peru, Venezuela. In Asia, South Korea, Japan, Jordan, India, the Philippines, and Thailand. In Africa, Angola, Burundi, Cameroon, Gabon, Ghana, Nigeria, Senegal, Sudan, and Zaire and in Oceania, Fiji, and Australia. The children bringing the gifts are from Korea, Africa, Nicaragua, India, Thailand, Poland, Italy, Mexico. have been hearing Puer Natos in Bethlehem, a child is born in Bethlehem, with music by Domenico Bartolucci, the leader 
of the Sistine Choir. The chalice which you see is the one brought out for very special occasions, made from the gold and the jewels that were in the bridle and the bit of a set of horses given by the Turkish Sultan, the Ottoman Emperor, to Pius IX in the 1840s, now made into a chalice for the glory and service of God. is the figure of St. Helena, the mother of the Emperor Constantine, who found the true cross in the Holy Land. window is of alabaster, the only colored window in the entire basilica. An alabaster window with a dove in the center symbolizing the Holy Spirit. And now the Holy Father once again incenses the altar and the gifts which will be consecrated into the body and blood of Christ, the bread and the wine which have been offered in this Mass. singing to all the world made known. The rose midst winter's cold, a lonely blossom bearing, in former days foretold. his hands after he has incensed the altar and he prays, wash away my iniquity, cleanse me from my sin. The mass booklets which are distributed to all the participants this evening invite them to sing this hymn each in his or her own language. This rose then of my story Isaiah did proclaim, but God ordained in glory by blessed Mary came. The child the virgin bore, the world's salvation bringing through him forevermore. Orata Krapas, meu agvestum sacrificio, Acceptabile fiat, apud Deum Patro Omnipotent. The Pope invites people to pray that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father, and the people respond, may the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good, the good of all this church. Ut per hexa sancta commercia, 
in inius inveniamur forma, in quote cum est nostra substantia, per Christum Dominum nostrum. Lord, accept our gifts on this joyful feast of our salvation by our communion with God made man. May we become more like him who joins our lives to yours. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Domino de nostro. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. Vere dignum et justum est, ecum et salutare. Nos divi semper et ubique gratias agere. Domine Sancte Pater. Father, all-powerful and ever-living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks through Jesus Christ our Lord. Today in him a new light has dawned upon the world. God has become one with man and man has become one again with God. Mirando consorcio, redi eternos. Your eternal word has taken upon himself our human weakness, giving our mortal nature immortal value. So marvelous is this oneness between God and man that in Christ man restores to man the gift of everlasting life. In our joy we sing to your glory with all the choirs of angels. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Clementissime Pater, per Jesum Christum, Filium Tum, Dominum Nostrum, supplices rogamus ac petimus, uti accepta habea, et benedicam, through him we ask you to accept and bless these gifts we offer you in sacrifice. In primis quetivi operimus, pro ecclesia tua sancta catholica, Quam pacificare, custodire, adunare, ed regere, ed mieris. We offer them for your holy Catholic Church. Watch over it, Lord, and guide it. Granted peace and unity throughout the world. We offer them for me, your unworthy servant, and for all who hold and teach the Catholic faith that comes to us from the apostles. Memento Domine, famulorum famularumque tuarum. 
he now asks the Lord to remember the living for whom we now pray. Remember all of us gathered here before you. You know how friendly we believe in you and dedicate ourselves to you. We offer you this sacrifice of praise for ourselves and those dear to us. We pray to you, our living and true God, for our well-being and redemption. In union with the whole church, we celebrate that night when Mary, without loss of her virginity, gave the world its Savior. We honor Mary, the ever-Virgin Mother of Jesus Christ, our Lord and God. We honor Joseph, her husband, the apostles and martyrs. Andre, Jacobi, Ioannis, Tome, Jacobi, Filippi, Bartolomei, Matei, Simonis, Estadei, Dini, Cleti, Clementis, Xisti, Corneli, Cipriani, Laurenti, Risogoni, Ioannis, et Pauli, Cosme, et Damiani, et Omnium Sanctorum Tuorum, Forum Meritis, Precibusque Concedas, May their merits and prayers gain us your constant help and protection. Father, accept this offering from your whole family. Save us from final damnation. Count us among those you have chosen. Bless and approve our offering. Make it acceptable to you an offering in spirit and truth. Let it become the body and blood of Jesus Christ, your only Son, our Lord. The Holy Father will now say the words of consecration. He will soon say, take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. Dedicque discipuli suis dices, accipite et manducate et hoc omnes, hoc est en corpus meum, quod provovis tradetu. Now the Holy Father will consecrate the chalice of wine into the precious blood of Christ. Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and ever everlasting covenant. Qui provobis et promultis et fundetur in remissionem peccatorum, hoc facite in meam commemoration.
It's interesting to note this posture of the Swiss guards during the consecration. The Holy Father said, let us proclaim the mystery of faith. And the people say, when we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, Lord Jesus, until you come in glory. Holy Father says, we celebrate the memory of Christ. We recall his passion, his resurrection, his ascension into glory. From the many gifts you have given us, we offer to you this holy and perfect sacrifice, the bread of life and the cup of eternal salvation. Look with favor on these offerings. Accept them as you accepted the gift of Abel. You accepted the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the bread and wine offered by your priest Melchizedek. Almighty God, we pray that your angel may take this sacrifice to your altar in heaven. Then as we receive from this altar the sacred body and blood of your Son, let us be filled with every grace and blessing. Memento etiam Domine, famulorum, famularum, quetuarum, qui nos preceserum, cum signa fidei, the Holy Father now asks that God remember those who have died. Ipsis Domini, et omnibus in Christo qui essentibus, locum refrigeri, lucis et pacis, ut indulge as deprecam. May these and all who sleep in Christ find in your presence light, happiness, and peace. For us sinners, we ask some share in the fellowship of your apostles and martyrs. Agatha Lucia, Agnete Cecilia Anastasia, et omnibus sancti stuis, intra quorum nos consortium, non estimator meritum, do not consider what we truly deserve, but grant us your forgiveness. Per Christum Domium Nostri, per quem, hec omnia Domini, semper bona creas, sanctificas, vivificas, benedicis et prestas nos. Per ipsum, et cum ipso, et in ipso, estimi Deo Patri Omnipotenti, in unidate Spiritus Sancti, omnis codor et gloria. Through Christ our Lord, you give us all these gifts. You fill them with life and goodness. You bless them and make them holy. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. And now the Pope will ask us to join together in reciting the Lord's Prayer. E divina istituzione formati, audemus dicem.
familiar words of the Lord's Prayer, the Holy Father prays, deliver us from every evil and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin and protect us from all anxiety as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Expectantes beatam sper, et adventum salvatoris nostri, Jesu Christi. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. The Holy Father will now ask that Christ give peace to his followers. Pax Domini, sit semper vobiscum. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And now the deacon will ask those present to exchange with one another a sign of Christ's peace. takes away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, who take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, who take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. lines of priests going to different points in the basilica to distribute communion throughout this vast church. The Holy Father himself will distribute communion to about 150 people this evening. The priests who distribute communion come from different colleges for graduate study here in Rome, or they may be priests visiting who have asked for the privilege to be able to suffered by the Holy Father. Behold the Lamb of God.